The following is an actual recording of an interview with John Wayne Gacy, recorded by Ken Hackney in 1993. This interview has never been released. Copyright 1993. This audio may not be reproduced, rebroadcast, or used in any way without the expressed written consent of Ken Hackney. For permission to use this audio, or for a raw copy of this interview without the music, contact this YouTube account. This is a Consolidated Communications Automated Operator with a collect call from Menard Correctional Center in May. John Owen Gacy. This call is subject to being recorded. Hang up to decline the call. To accept the call, dial 3 or clearly say, yes, I accept at the tone. Subject to being monitored and recorded. Now, the unreleased interview with John Wayne Gacy. People say that you confessed to the crime, then later recanted it. Is this true? That is what has been said in the media and at the trial. And to this day, nobody has produced one. There is no written confession, there is no tape-recorded confession, there is no police stenographer-type confession, and no videotape confession. It was in my appeal, and the, the court refused to look at it, and the state refused to answer it. If they have nothing to hide, I can't understand why they can't produce one. Okay, then if you're not guilty, uh, then why did you go with an insanity defense? I did, and it was totally against it. But we, but was deceived. The only plea that I ever entered was on January 10th of 1979 when I entered a plea of not guilty. But what about the evidence in the case? Uh, you can't deny that the bodies were found buried in your house. Yes, that's true, but the house wasn't a home. Like what you, you know, what you go to a home to each night. The Summerdale house was rented to PDM contractors. There was 12 keys out to it, but that was never allowed to come out at the trial as it would put doubt in the state's theory. They didn't want anybody to know that other people had keys to the house. Plus the fact that I wasn't always at the house, so others used it just as much. And again, that wasn't brought out at the trial, as it didn't fit with the state's theory of the case, that I committed all the crime. Okay, then what about the smell in your house? Surely you must have noticed a smell. There was no smell. Over the six years' time, other than when it rained, the musty odor was present. People were in and out of that house daily for years, and other than when it rained, there was no odor, and certainly not like what some of the books said. That's all fantasy. If that odor was there, somebody would have noticed it sooner. Okay, then, the police were at your house before your arrest, uh, and what, what did they smell when they were at your house? Well, apparently nothing as of December 13, 1978. There was 20 trained police officers came to the house with a warrant, searched the house, and even went down in the crawl space while I was being held at the, at the jail in Des Plaines, Illinois. They never took anything from the crawl space other than bringing up lime into the house. They also were no mounds of dirt like what is mentioned in books. Okay, you sold a car to your employee, Michael Rossi, uh, that belonged to one of the victims, John Zick. Yet you deny this. That's true. Th this came out at trial, too. And yet it's not true, and even the state knew this and covered it up. The Bureau of Scientific Services in Maywood, Illinois, on March 27, 1979, a year before the trial, this report shows that the handwriting samples were taken from me, from John Zick, the, the victim, and from Michael Rossi, and that they were compared to the motor vehicle's title, R1209194, and the other questionable vehicle transfer papers. The result of the findings was that all the names were forged by Michael Rossi as it was all done in his handwriting. Yet at trial, even knowing this, the state told the jury that John Wayne Gacy did this. My defense attorneys never objected to it because they thought it didn't harm my case. You claim that you were not even in Illinois when 16 of the victims went missing. Why was this not brought out in trial? Because my trial attorneys never did their job to investigate my claim, and it was, wasn't until we took over the investigation on my own that we learned of this. 
even the FBI who joined in in 1984 with their reasoning being that they wanted to know if, if others in other states disappeared or were murdered while I was in those states. The result shows that during the time of of the victim's disappearance in Chicago that I wasn't even in Chicago. One judge said, so what? If he was out of town for 16 of them, there are still 17 others. That alone should have raised some doubt. Okay, you said that there were 12 keys out to the Somerdale house, and yet this was not mentioned at your trial. Why do you think this is? It wasn't in the state's best interest to let the jury know this as it would raise doubt that John Gacy acted alone. The defense attorneys didn't bring it out as it didn't have, didn't go along with their insanity defense showing that others were involved. The entire defense theory was is to leave it stand where it was, which I never understood to begin with. Didn't you take some sort of test that you willingly submitted to? Yes, in the Cook County Jail, I was given three and a half hours of true serum, sodium amethol. The maximum amount you could give while the results, again, are not admissible in court. The results were positive, one showing I had no knowledge of about 28 of the victims, and that the five I had information about was not about their deaths. John, in uh, book and television interviews, it's been said that bodies found in your garage were shown and even marked by you with a can of spray paint. Yes, I, I marked the spot in the garage when I was back at the house on December 22nd. They had asked me with all of the rebuilding of the garage, which was the last area of concrete, in the last area where the concrete was poured, and they handed me an orange spray can and I put an X, that's it, an X over the spot in the, in the corner of the garage where I thought the last area was poured. Now, all of a sudden, Kunkel claims that I not only drew an X, but I put a, a, an O on top of it where the head was and it made the X look like it was a stick figure. And that's not true. Somebody else must have taken the can after I had left the garage. Well, given all of this damning evidence against you, uh, don't you think it's going to be difficult trying to get the public to believe you? I'm not interested in what the public thinks, as I, my fight is in the courts. And while I have been fighting with, with the appeal, it's been an uphill battle because I am an unpopular cause. Too much public pressure, too much politics to give me a hearing so that I can prove that the state withheld evidence favorable to me, that the identifications of some of the victims was wrong, and that my attorney was more concerned about book rights and how, sens how sensationally more the case could get the higher the value of the book. Keep in mind, the public has been brainwashed and nearly 80% of what is known about me is fantasy and self-serving theories of the state. But overall, I am an embarrassment on the justice system because if I am right, then they are wrong and the killers are still out there. For political reasons, it would be better that I drop dead. Then they could all say what a great job they've done and nobody else would be pushing for the truth to come out.